Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be discussing the ZWO ASI 183 series of camera and whether it's still worth buying these cameras in 2023 and frankly beyond. Uh, these cameras still feel new to me, but they're actually aging pretty quickly in terms of technology and sensor technology. So that's basically going to be the, the discussion today is whether these old cameras can still hold their own versus the newer sensor technology. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I own both the monochrome version and the color version of these two cameras and I can tell you that these have contributed far more to my astrophotography catalog than any other ca camera over the years. So I've thoroughly enjoyed these and I have a ton of experience with them and that's frankly why I'm making this video is because I feel like I'm qualified to talk about these cameras because I've used them so much. Now this camera uses the one inch sensor format so it's kind of a smaller sensor but what's amazing about it is it still packs 20 million pixels in there. So this is a 20 megapixel camera. And if you look at that sensor, man, it is quite small to pack in 20 million pixels, which means that the sensor has to have really small pixel sizes, which it does. The pixels in this camera are only 2.4 microns in size. So it's capable of giving you some extremely good resolution in your deep sky images your solar system images, and frankly, solar photography as well. So that is one of the main selling points for the ASI 183 series, or the Sony IMX 183 sensor that it contains, is you are capable of taking some pretty high resolution images with it. Now, at the current time, one strike against the 183 camera is that it has a 12-bit ADC, or analog digital converter, and that has to do with the dynamic range of the camera. So the higher that number, so if you've seen, you know, 12-bit, ADC or a 14-bit, even a 16-bit sometimes, the higher that number, the better dynamic range you're going to get in your camera. So at the time, you know, 12-bit is really good, but with uh, our current technology, again, you see a lot of 14-bit and 16-bit ADCs, it is a bit dated. <laughs> get it? A bit? <laughs> a bit dated in that regard. That was unintentional, by the way. Now let's talk about the pixel sizes a little bit with this camera. So. As I mentioned before, this uses 2.4 micron pixels. Uh, so very small pixels giving you the option to have some really high resolution images. So this works extremely well with low focal length telescopes. So little refractors, the Celestron Rasa, which is what I've primarily used this camera with, um, you're gonna get some really high resolution images. And the lower that focal length, obviously the larger the field of view given the size of the sensor. So you can do some pretty spectacular work even with a tiny telescope, which is one of the main appeals of this camera for me. The other nice thing though is with a, just a simple 2x bin, uh, you obviously increase those pixel sizes, so then it becomes a good camera for larger telescopes as well. So maybe Newtonians like my Explore Scientific Comet Hunter, this is a really good camera for it, or even up to larger Schmidt Cassegrains. Where the 183 series of camera really shines is with telescopes that have focal lengths of 400 millimeters or less. The reason for that is if you use cameras with large pixels, you can start to get square uh, stars and stuff like that from undersampling. So this really helps eliminate that problem with those uh, smaller focal length telescopes. And I just wanted to showcase some of my best images that I've taken with this camera not too long ago, you know, about a year ago or so, or even more recent than that. Most of these images you see have been very minimally processed and that essentially should show you how good the 183 and the Rasa can be as a match. So check these out.
Now ZWO does make a third version of the 183 camera. It's called the ASI 183 GT. This version features an integrated five position filter wheel in front of the sensor and deeper cooling abilities. It has two cooling fans as well as a bigger body to help diffuse that heat away better. The ability to just simplify your setup a bit is always appealing to me as well as get that deeper cooling. It would definitely be a great option for um, deep sky imagers and planetary imagers alike. Now I want to hit pause real quick on this video. It is now 2024 and while editing this video I realized that I did not talk about the full well capacity of the camera which is a pretty big omission so I want to do that now. The ASI 183 cameras have a full well capacity of 15,000 electrons. Now you might be thinking to yourself compared to newer cameras that might be a little bit small. But actually the full well capacity of these pixels is more a property of the pixel size than it is technological advancements. So this camera as mentioned has pretty small pixels. They're 2.4 microns in size. So once they fill up those 15,000 electrons, you know that pixel is saturated. But with uh, cameras that have larger pixel sizes, so 3.76 microns or 4.63 or even larger, the full well capacity of those cameras is going to be bigger because instead of a, a small little pixel, you're getting bigger pixels so they can hold more electrons in them. So the full well capacity of this camera is actually pretty good still. 15,000 electrons is not bad given how small those pixels are. And of course, if you buy a camera with larger pixel sizes, you're going to have a higher full well capacity. So with that said, let's go ahead and resume the video now and talk about the quantum efficiency. ZWO does not publish actual quantum efficiency graphs for the ASI 183 series of camera. So I did find some online though and I figured I'd show these to you for both the monochrome and the color version of the sensor. So here at the monochrome graph you can see the peak quantum efficiency is about 84% in the green which is pretty good for this older sensor. And as you move into the reds, kind of towards that hydrogen alpha wavelength, 656 nanometers or so, you see it drops pretty significantly to only about 45, 50% or so. However, overall, if you look at this graph, just as one big hole, uh, the blues and the greens are transmitted pretty well. And so I would say this is actually pretty good quantum efficiency in the monochrome version of the sensor. Now, moving over to the color version for the quantum efficiency, you'll see that the blues, their maximum peak is about 65%. The maximum quantum efficiency of the greens is only about 73% and the maximum quantum efficiency for red is only about 60%. So just as you would expect, the color sensor has quite a bit less quantum efficiency than the monochrome sensor. And this actually is what makes it pretty good with fast optics like the Celestron Rasa. At f2 you're collecting light so quickly and producing images so fast that the quantum efficiency doesn't matter as much. I mean, obviously it still matters, but because those optics are so fast, you can still produce good to great images with the color version of the camera. I hope this video was kind of helpful in just giving a basic rundown of the 183, someone that has a lot of experience showing their images and what it's capable of, and, and that it's still a great little camera even here in 2023. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching as always and hope you have uh, clear skies and a great day.